Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Touching You Talk Show. My name is Elder Sheila Black, and guess what? I have a very special guest with me tonight in the person of Ruben Martinez. How are you today, sir? Great. How are you doing, Elder Sheila? I am doing well. So I always ask my guests, how long have we known each other? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, not very long, but uh, it's been it's been amazing since we've met. I, I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it feels like eternity. How about that? It makes sense. Absolutely. So tell me, where are you from? I'm in, I'm from El Paso, Texas. Yes. Okay. I'm from a little uh, high school called Bel Air Highlanders. Uh, okay. So the only, uh, I would say the only Scottish uh, high school you would think, of course, when you think El Paso, you think Scotland. So that's where I'm from. <laughs> cool, cool. And I just want to pause and thank our program manager tonight. I see that she is watching Miss Elaine Collins. She is our program manager tonight. So thank you so much, ma'am. I appreciate you. So uh, you're from El Paso. Uh, and now, how in the world did you land up, land in Dallas, the LW area? How did you land? I know. Yeah, you know, it's funny because uh, we used to go to uh, church camps here in, uh, uh, in the Dallas Fort area. We, uh, Mount Lebanon at, by Cedar Hill was one of them we would always go to. And I always thought that was so far away. And then I graduated from high school and I went to Baylor. <laughs> so, so Baylor was totally again right down the, the area, and then right right after I left Baylor, I, I came and visited. I lived in Plano for a while, and uh, now I'm in Fort Worth. Uh, okay. But yeah, it was in the area. The job that I work for is here as well. So, this brought me to the the Metroplex. Interesting side note: when I was at Baylor, I would always call the Dallas Fourth area Sodom and Gomorrah with the middle. <laughs> and now I live I live there. So, so it's definitely not Sodom. And that would be Houston or someplace else, right? <laughs> Okay, okay. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. So, uh, so now you're an actor. Yes. How in the world did you become an actor? When did you realize that you could you could act? When did you realize? Well, I think I think you know I'm the youngest of seven, and uh, we for Christmas times we put on little plays for our family. Uh, we you know do instrumentation. We do a little like acting here and there. And of course, growing a church, we also had plays. So I was either the tree or the bush or the lamb. So I realized, you know what? I can act as a really good lamb. I was really, I was not really bad at it, but I was, I was okay, I would say. Uh, but, but that really kind of stoked just the idea of entertaining. Uh, that moved on to when I, in my professional career, I would actually then go to different events. I'd speak at large corporate events with thousands of people. And I just, you know, make people laugh. I would, you know, you know uh, when I'm talking to a CEO or president, or even, no matter who it was, even in small meetings, like maybe five or 10 people, I would always put on like a different facade and try to be different. And so that just lend itself to like, you know what, I could do this. And so I just, from there, it was easy to say, you know what, I think I'm an actor because people would always say, you know what, you act so much, you're, you're so funny, you should be an actor. And I finally listened to them. I said, okay, I guess I should. Hmm. So uh, when we talked a little bit earlier, you said something about you, you would sometimes speak with an accent. Why don't you give us one of those accents that you would speak with? Uh, yeah, so I used to work for a company based out of Montreal. So I'd always speak with the, I would get some croissants uh, with the little hors d'oeuvres. I'd put a bit of fromage on the top, you know, just a little bit, uh, un petit peu, if you will. <laughs> so again, just, just to be silly. And people would say, wait a minute, your last name is Martinez. It doesn't, <laughs> it's not Martinique, it's not Martin. It's like, wait a minute. I don't and I, I don't understand. Is that from South France or is it, it was like didn't, they really didn't catch? So I, I've also so I've also traveled the world. I've been to almost every country in South America, almost every country in Europe as well, and of course almost every state in the United States. So picking up local accents here and there it was kind of easy for me. So when I when I'm getting into a biblical character, I you know I immediately start doing these accents because I've heard them so many times as well. And then, of course, when you're there, like when I'm in Brazil, you, you immediately start speaking Portuguese, of course, because you want to eat. <laughs> okay. yeah. Boom, dia, boom, dia. Yeah. You know, so you, you, you immediately, oh, my God. So you start talking the language. And you start replicating what you're around as well. So so where is that Southern draw? Give me a Southern draw. Well, uh, let's see. When I when I go to Savannah, 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 do you speak very, no, hold on, Savannah. You got the mint julep from Savannah, and you take it. You drink it very slow, you know, as you're betting on the horses. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
So, okay, so you realize you could do this and you can make money. Oh my God, what what's the first movie you were ever in? Yeah, no, like, oh, let like, me back up. Let's say first, let me ask you, how many movies have you been in? Oh gosh, uh, 15, 20 uh, different movies. I, I've, and I've been from background all the way to, and not just movies, but TV shows, uh, performances, theater. I was actually, I've done theater as well. Uh, so probably 15, 20. Uh, I, I've, my IMDb shows I've done so much more. Uh, but yeah, it's just been, and every one of them has been a joy. Uh, every, even the ones that, they're, they're, they're all Christian based, but they're all over the place. So just amazing. And okay. take a while to guess what which character I play, of course. I'm always the, you know, the serious character. <laughs> no. I'm typically I'm typically a drug cartel guy, Al Qaeda because of the hair, or ISIS, and or some kind of homeless guy. <laughs> so, but yes, yeah, one day, one day I'll be the Brad Pitt. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was the name of the first movie? Can you remember? That was a while. Ago. I don't. That was a great question. You asked me that before. I'm, I'm not sure. I, there, there was just a year that I was doing almost every movie. It seemed like I was. Um, they had me do one thing and I was, okay, once I was done with it, I went to another one like a week later. And then another week, a week later, I was like, almost like the flavor of the year, if you will. And it was hard for me to remember that there was, uh, I want to say it was Resurrection 33 ID probably was the first one, which was Black Easter. <laughs> so again, I can't remember uh, the, that one as well. And, and there's been some, I was Al Qaeda with uh, um, the Osama Bin Laden, True, True uh, Hollywood Stories, or True Story, sorry. Uh, so again, it's been several, and of course, The Chosen was probably another one as well. I was in. So, in all of your movies, are you speaking in all of them, or are some of them you're just there? So, uh, on The Chosen, I'm I'm background. Uh, I would say I'm the most recognizable, unrecognizable person. I can't say that as much anymore because people are are recognize me too often now. So I'll, I'll put my hair up so people won't notice it's me. <laughs> But uh, um, that, I would say in those, I, I was background, but most of my, I, I now speak. Uh, so I have different roles. So uh, Philemon, um, of course, one that I wrote myself, which is Paul, the last apostle, uh, and, and others where I actually now, uh, Insure was another one I've done. Uh, Vindication, I'm, I'm in the TV show Vindication, which we just saw the premiere this past weekend, which is amazing. I won't tell you anything about it, but just season three, amazing. I, I, I could say I was the only one that spoke in Spanish the entire time, which is fantastic for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jared, for letting me do that. So, but yeah, that was that was a lot of fun as well. Wow, wow. Okay, all right, all right. So you write. So tell me about some of the projects that you've written. You said Paul the Apostle. Tell me about yeah. it. what was that like? Yeah, so that was that was a very fun uh, project. Um, I met a, a, an executive producer on another movie I was on called Philemon, and uh, uh, he said, "Hey, I, I got this great idea for a script." We should do uh, something about Paul. I said, you know, great, that's great. And we looked at each other. We didn't have a script, so he, he, we worked on it together. And uh, so we, we started writing. So I, I did some parts. He did some other parts. And just having that, um, just focusing on what who Paul was, doing all the research about who where who Paul was, and also people around him. For me, I love the character development. Uh, I just the, who for me, I think you know Jesus was amazing. He's a savior, Lord and Savior, great. But he also was defined by people around him as well. When I look at Paul. Paul, amazing missionary, you know, but he was not Paul without Silas and Priscilla and Aquila and, and Timothy, people that are around him. That's what made him kind of like who we are. It makes who is who we are. You're defined by who you you brought you were brought up with your people that you're that you're around as well. And that for me was such a great way just to to go into like who would who was Priscilla, who was Aquila. So kind of you know, so as I'm writing that, I'm thinking, man, this is such great. Uh, what a great piece. And and the amazing part about that is as I'm writing, I'm like, you know what would be great if something tragic would happen? And I'm looking, hey, that already happened in the Bible. I don't have to, I don't have to write that down. And so it, it just it was perfect the way that it was written. And, and when I look at the word of God and just the fact these stories are so well written already, when you even the little piece that you add, just add more commentary, more things around it, you don't add much because God has already written some beautiful things. But but being able to add just a little bit what, what I think would be, of course, it's, it's Ruben Martinez' opinion, that's about it. It's not biblical, you know, uh, uh, gospel truth. It's just what I think would have happened. But to see that, you know, that God would give me a mindset of creativity to add that in there as well, as well as he's done other uh, to, for other people. And just being able to write that down and stay true to what the word says without changing it, of course, but staying true. And it, and it already writes itself. And I just, that was such a, a joy. I also, with that same, um, that same uh, show, Paul, the Last Apostle, I was actually able to produce it as well. And I just, again, the best crew I could, I could ever ask for. 
And just seeing that side and actually going out and finding a cast agent, uh, my friend Ronnie, uh, going out and looking at for a, a director, my friend Ruthie, uh, assistant director Christian, and gosh, all you know, Savannah and Rebecca. I can name there's everyone on that set was just amazing. And just being able to know that they were doing their best. And then when we see what it's done, it's like, wow, you think we spent $3 million on it, but it's just, it was all God. And again, it all comes back to the writing that we started originally and just praying about it. And Lord, give me, give me a creative mind and know what I should write here. So did it bring you actually closer? Did it make your walk with God closer by writing and producing? It, 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 it did. It, it opened new thoughts for me that I never had before. Uh, the fact that Priscilla and Aquila eventually met Paul in Ephesus, the fact that when you're, when he wrote Thessalonians, he never went back to Thessalonica. But the, the church itself, he was only there for a little bit. And, and the, when you look at the history, Paul was actually only there for a little bit. He preached, and then his own believers said, you, mean, you need to leave. His own followers said, got to go. He didn't want to go. He goes to Berea, and now the Bereans, of course, we all know about the Bereans. They're amazing. They're good studies of the word. They were studying. They, were, they wanted to know more about what Paul was talking about, this, this, their Savior, Jesus is the Savior, and, you know, the Messiah is here. But they wanted to know more. They were actually studying it. And it was the Greek women. So the Greek women that were saying, I want to know more. And, and just seeing that. And then when you tie that into, like, even Timothy, how Timothy had his mother and his grandmother. There was that legacy of who Timothy was. It was through this, these strong women. So you kind of see that, how that's going. And then all of a sudden, his, again, Paul's father said, you got to go. You got to go get out of here. Go to Athens. You just go somewhere because they're going to come attack you. And, and Paul's like, but I, I want people, how many times does that happen to us? We're like, but God, I'm preaching and they're listening. They're actually telling me they're, they're coming to Christ. And Paul's and, and God's like, no, I need you. I need you okay. in Waco. I need you in, Bron I need you somewhere else. But yeah. you, and you, can, you don't want to leave, but you, you fall where God tells you to. But then you look back and you look at, the, there's actually books written to Thessalonians. And he's like, I, I'm amazed on what God has done for you. And, he's, and he, Paul realizes it wasn't me. It wasn't my word. It wasn't my motivation. It was nothing I said to change them, but it was only the word of God, the spirit of God that changed them. And he realized that it's not about Paul. It was about Jesus to begin with and about the Holy Spirit. That really, and it was God's plan for them. And that's what really reached them. And to see that, that opened my eyes like, wow. And then, of course, when you look at Priscilla and Aquila, Priscilla is mentioned in the Bible. And yeah, she's almost, you know, almost, I would say, higher up than Aquila because, you know, female and then also mentioned. Mm -hmm. And to see what 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 uh, just a um, motivation that she had within her own family, and she's the one, and it was them that taught Silas about God. So so to see that that again, God was using these strong women. And for me, you always hear Paul being mean to women, but when I read them, I'm like it was the Greek women. It was it was, it was like that. It goes completely against who you think Paul is. So it really it showed me something totally different about Paul, and it got me close again. Just not that I think treat women bad. No, of course not. But just realizing that every one of us, that God has a plan for every single one of us, no matter where he places us, even in places where we're successful, he says, no, I want you at the place where you won't be successful. Because it's me. Because all of a sudden you're going to say, oh, I'm the one that brought them to Christ. It was me that brought them. And God's like, no, it was, it's only by my spirit will they come. Just go do what I ask you to do. Share the word. Share, share, share what I tell you to share. And that's it. Let me do the, the growing. Let me do the, the watering. And I'll take care of it from there. And just seeing that just brought me, again, it, how can I not be humbled to know that it was, it's all God. So when I look at this, 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 when once, once Paul comes, gets released, I'm, you, I, I'm, you're gonna, you guys are going to love it. I'm, of course, I know you guys love it. <laughs> but to see that it was actually only God that provided that. It, was not, it had nothing to do with me. It just, I, you, yes, I wrote part of it. But again, it's nothing to do with me. Yes, I acted in it, but it had nothing to do with me. Yes, I produced it. Nothing to do with me. It was all God. And seeing that, and, and I want to do that with more. And because, again, who wouldn't want to be with the creator to create, create things that have never been done before or to create stories that would intrigue people as well? My other my other intention with Paul was not to do another Bible book for the Christians. Uh, and, that, and that sounds weird. But my, my intention was to go to the non-Christian. Go to because almost what every almost every single Christian story, the atheist is always the bad guy. Mm -hmm. You know what? The Bible says he left the 99 to go for the one. That one is that atheist. Right. So I would rather write to the atheist and, and show to real life that Christians were not perfect. We make a lot of mistakes. It's not because we're perfect that makes us Christians. It's because we know that we're forgiven. And we know that God has a plan for each one of us, that he chose to 
use us and he said his son had died on the cross for us. Yes, even us, the most biggest sinner in the world. And to see that, how can I not share that, right? right. <laughs> so that, that, that inspires writing as well. So do you consider yourself a movie writing preacher? <laughs> Yes. I'm telling you, right, right there, right there. You preach a whole sermon. <laughs> That's they call it a homily. Oh, <laughs> yes, you did. Do you consider yourself a preacher? You know, you know. Um, years ago, when I, I when I was in Waco, I had my I had a pastor there, which my my friend Romito Pena, a great guy, uh, just you know, just amazing. He would he would share one thing with me, and that it's always stuck with me. He said that one of God's names is God. And just knowing that, and, and of course, he also said, you know what, be evangelist, go out, share the word. So I, I consider us all preachers. And we're sharing what's in our heart. And we're sharing, and not just just telling people, hey, you need, need to repent, but showing love. It's it's by the love that we can't just say, hey, go feed yourself without actually giving them food. Hey, go, go change your, you know, don't do drugs without showing them here. Here's some food. Let me take care of you. Let me help you to, to show you that there's a bitter, bigger, bitter I'm sorry, a, bigger, a better way than what you're doing right now. And so that that's kind of where I would say. So I would say maybe not preacher, maybe evangelist. <laughs> maybe reader, maybe writing an evangelist. Because uh, then I could go from place to place, right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So um so let's see. So you're a writer and a producer. What do you say to the person that that's looking to get into acting? What is the first thing they should do? Pray. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do it? Because it's a totally, it's a very uh, demanding uh, profession. And I would say, do your best. Uh, so whatever you're, if you are, an, you want to be an actor, you're convinced God's told you, you want to be an actor. Okay, now start training to be an actor. Uh, don't just sit there and say, I want to be an actor. God, send me something, and you know, hope still, you know, Steven Spielberg will call you. No, go do something. Go learn, learn the trade. Learn if you don't. You know, if you learn everything about acting, fine. Go learn about the crew. Learn about what it takes. Learn about lighting. How you can look certain ways. Those are things that will make you a better actor as well. But take the time to do that. I, I would say, if you're praying to be an actor, the same thing. If I'm if I'm sitting here praying for rain, I'm gonna go buy an umbrella because I believe it's gonna rain. If you're praying you're gonna be an actor, go start setting. Go start acting. Go start look at different films. Uh, try to become a better at your craft. And don't just sit there and say, I want to be an actor. I want to be an actor. I'm no, it's not gonna work. It's the same thing. Like uh, I, I've said this before, if you want to be a piano player, you're not just gonna sit at the piano. So, okay, God, tell me how to put my finger. No, you're going to take lessons. Same thing as an actor, same thing as a an athlete, whatever, whatever you're doing, go do that. And if nobody's calling you, if you're an actor, you say, you know what, God, nobody's calling me. I, you told me I'm going to be an actor and I, I've auditioned for a million roles and nobody's calling. Then write. Or find someone that's written and, and join with them and show your crap. If you're that good, God will bless it. If, it, if, you're, if, you're, if you're not meant to, guess what? God will bless it. But if you really firmly believe that God has you to be an actor, go do something with it. Make, create a monologue. Do a small little skit. Be funny. Be dramatic. Whatever, whatever you cho choose. But do something. Don't just sit there and expect it to come. Because it's not. They're not going to knock on the door and say, hey, here's the role from, you know, for the next Star Wars. It's not going to happen. It's gonna. It's you doing in the work that's gonna bring that uh, to fruition. So I love. I love the roles that you played. So are you saying that you don't have to sell your soul in order to be? <laughs> no, I am so serious because you know they have us thinking that you know as a female you gotta lay down and I don't know what the men have to do. <laughs> <laughs> but are you saying that you don't have to compromise your beliefs in order to be an actor or an actress? That's correct. I would say that when you don't compromise your beliefs, you're a better actor or an actress. It's when you're true to yourself and you realize there's certain roles that you're not going to do because of what you believe. Uh, then they're, they're, that's you know who you are. That becomes part of your character. You, that's your integrity. Uh, there, there, there are things where they'll test you. Like so, like for instance, I'll never in real life I'll never beat someone. But if I'm if it's a, if it's a uh, movie about Christianity and it's showing um, you know some kind of sin or, or you know somebody getting beat then that's part that I'm going to play. But if it's something that's okay, now we want you to take off your shirt and then, or all, and then that's going to be no. So, so it's really just know what you can do and know how you can do it as well. There's a lot of things you don't have to show, but people already will feel that emotion. If they can feel it from you and you're passionate about it, you don't have to show much. You don't, you, it's, they're like, oh man, man, they're already, they're already enthralled with what you're saying. They, you don't need to see more of your body. They don't see more of different things you're doing. They just know just by your, your voice and by 
your eyes. I mean, I, I think about Michael Caine, which is a, who's a great actor. Uh, I don't remember many that he's done since his older age that he's that he had to reveal take, taking shirts off or anything like that, or even, even some of these great actresses, because it's all about your what they bring to you. You're, you're already engaged in what they're saying. It's like, wow, I want to know more. What's going the next thing to happen? But it's really because they're you're engaged with who they are and, and what they're showing in their eyes, and it's that passion they have for the craft, and they they've devoted so much time to that as well. But no, I have not sold my soul. I I I. I I've let my barber go, though. Apparently, my barber and my, my hairstylist, <laughs> that I sold. But, but no, I have not. I definitely, you, you can definitely be a strong Christian and do some really good movies, not just only Christian movies. You can still do some great, Christ, great even non-Christian movies, as long as you know who you are and you stay true to yourself. So what do you say to that person that have already allowed, the, you know, been in a compromising situation? And maybe they want to get out. What what do they do? <laughs> How do they reconnect? You know, with the right people. How yeah. do they disconnect from the wrong people and connect to the right people? <laughs> you know, that, that's a great that's a great question as well. And I've actually been, you know, in other shows, and, and I find you know, a lot of people that come to me, uh, even with the chosen. Uh, I try to while I'm there, even as background. I don't see myself as just being background there. I see when when we're there and holding, we're talking. I'm talking to a lot of people i'm trying to you know there's a lot there's so many stories there's so many people that have been hurt there's so many people that they, they are trying to do the different things i've had other actresses come to me like look i've been in bad movies i've been in adult movies what do i do now i want to i want to be known for good things i would say you know i would you know i would say look what christ did he wrote on the ground he said look around you 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 that have the first stone throw the you know start throw the first stone you with no sin throw the first stone and that's the same thing. God doesn't judge you. If you if you've repented, and you and you've changed, and you want to change, God will provide a way. It'll, it's not going to be easy. I, I, I don't want to lie to anybody. It's definitely not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. You're going to be tempted. You're going to be want to do different things. You want to go back to your old life, but stay true with what God has. Even though when you don't see anything happening, when the darkest darkest times, you're like nobody's calling you. You're you're you know all of a sudden all your friends are gone. You, you, all the people that you knew before. They're saying, well, if you came back to this bad movie, you can be in a movie. At least when all that happens, it's the darkest. Look for that light. Listen for that voice. God's still there, and he has plans for you as well. Just stay true who you are. Work on your craft. That I can't, I can't express that enough. Work on your craft over and over again. If you're a basketball player, you're a baseball player, whatever you are, actor, don't just sit there and just say, I, I give up. No, keep on working. Keep on working because the day's coming. And if, and if it doesn't come, you just train yourself to be an amazing actor. And that's and what great thing, even, even if it's in that one time that that's what God used you for, that's amazing. I'll be honest, there, there are times when I'm like, uh, I've been in movie sets, well, Paul would be a great, Paul Lass would possibly be a great example. When I'm, I'm giving the best I can, and I'm, I'm telling God, I said, Lord, even if it's the last thing I do, if I die today, or if nobody ever calls me again, if I can witness to one person, if I can share God's love with one person, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter about me. It matters about you. And I'll tell a quick story about my mother. This is kind of, you'll kind of understand who I am. When my mom, my mom died of cancer a few years ago, and she was in the hospital. And this lady, this wonderful woman of God, she would witness everybody. She was like a little Paul, I would say, like Paulette. <laughs> she would witness everybody, no matter where she'd go, uh, you know, pay, when she's paying the bills, wherever she would go, she'd always, we'd always end up being her witnessing somebody, no matter where. <laughs> Uh, but I remember her hearing that when she was in the hospital and the doctor would come in and say, you know, you know, Mrs. Martinez, you know, here's the results and sorry, this, and is there anything we can do for you? And my mom would say, no, but what can I do for you? Can I pray for you? Do you know where you're going to, where you, what's going to happen to you? And she, even on her deathbed was witnessing to, to a doctor and the doctor's like, lady, you're dying. And he's like, yeah, but I know where I'm going. You know where you're going? And that's kind of how, again, so if you find yourself and you've made all these d different, you know, mistakes, which, again, my mother wasn't perfect. I'm not perfect. We're never, no one's perfect. Only Christ is. So if you made mistakes and you've done all these different things and you, you how can I ever come back from that? No matter how bad it is, God still has a plan. He's not forgotten you. He knows your name. He has a name that was written on his heart. He knows you. And he's not going to give up on you. And so even though it's dark, even though you don't know what to do, just there's hope. And thankfully, we have a God that loves us, that sent his son to die for us. Yes, even the most evil people out there, 
<laughs> even the ones that did the most mistakes that, you know, like, I can't believe you did that. Even those guys, and those girls, God still did it for you. And he, and he has some special things for you as well. And if that's how you feel, that you, you, God's calling you to be an actress or whatever God's calling you to be, step into that. Stay true to his word and just be obedient. So I know it's beautiful being in front of the camera, but tell me about being behind the camera <laughs> as being the producer. Tell yeah. me, what is that like? That was that was a lot of fun. You know, I, I never produced in my life before that. I think the only thing I produced was, I don't know, um, fruit that it was in my garden. <laughs> so it was, it was really bad. So that, but being behind the camera and actually seeing, uh, I was very fortunate to have uh, amazing, an amazing director, amazing assistant director and crew that just did all they could for me. And, and I, I, they literally hit my heart. I remember my assistant director was looking for different help for different grips and gaffers. And he told me, he's like, I, I told him, here's my, how much gonna, we're going to pay you. That's not much. And they're like, no, I, I can't do it. And he's like, well, it's for Ruben. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. And just so knowing that they would do that for me, it, it hit my heart. And seeing that they actually, they not only did, but they worked so hard. They did the best they can. And, and, and just seeing that, just it brought tears to my eyes. And actually being behind the camera, seeing all the different movement here and there, and, and all these people I brought in, even the, we had, I think we had 74 extras that were not, wow. even, not even paid, came on and wanted to be on this film. And just and, and I've made so, so friends since then, even the cast and director from there as well. Uh, Twyla uh, was the one that did it. So. And, and as well as Ronnie, but but bringing people in that, that actually had uh, no experience, and they, but they wanted to be on my film. And that actually ended up being the background. There was actually a scene um, that we filmed that the director was showing me the other part of that scene, and I had to actually leave because uh, it brought a tear to my eye, knowing that that was going to be what we were filming. And it just it just hit me that wow, God would trust me with this, and to bring all the different pieces together, all the different crew and all the different cast, and just. That was totally different for me. I also acted in, in that one as well. I was I was Aquila, but being able to put out fires here and there, and all the different things, just but just having that joy of actually seeing people do that, that was again, I'd do it again. I, I would definitely do it again. Not no no question. Uh, definitely with the same crew I had, even if it was a different crew, because they're just amazing. All right. So currently you're on you're working with the film now, Chosen. Yes. So what, what? I know you can't tell us much. What, you, what can you tell me about it? <laughs> it's hot. You can tell this little tan right here, this little tan line. <laughs> I call it chosen tan line. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you, you, uh, you, you will, yeah, I've, lost, I've gained different colors already, but uh, we've, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, this season's uh, very interesting. It's going to be very powerful, just like last season as well. We're still filming here. They're going to do some more in, in Utah uh, to finish the season as well. Uh, again, just it met so many great people. Uh, I always go. I love being on the chosen side. I've said this, as long as they take, as long as they want me back, I'm fine. Uh, if I can go all the way to the last season, that'd be great. Uh, but again, it's like being back with the family uh, and, and knowing all the crew and the cast. They're just they're just amazing, and they brought it's like family. They bring me on as family, which is it's been fantastic. Uh, I can't tell you much. I, I, I'll, I'll, the only the only the only thing I'll tell you, it follows the Bible. That's all I'm going to say. So, spoiler that's if you are following the chosen, just look at the bottom. <laughs> and that's where we are. <laughs> okay. All right. How long are your days? Oh, gosh. So, this season we've had uh, typical, typical days have been 10 hours, but we've gone to 13, 14 hours as well. Uh, there have been, there've been a few overnights as well, which has been nice. Uh, but no, they've, they've been long days. Uh, if, if ever you want to be uh, in, in a background, uh, realize you're not just going to be there for one hour. <laughs> I'd like to. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to just be one hour long. It'll be like at least, you know, a long time, sometimes just in there, maybe for 10 hours, and then you get used for like 15 minutes. <laughs> so, but again, it's, but, but knowing that you're there as well, that's it's definitely, uh, it's, it's definitely a joy, definitely a joy. Okay, so you gave me a link to your photo ga gallery. Are these like different characters? They are. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this up, y'all. I'm gonna bring it up. It is so nice. Let's see here. Share my screen. All right. There it is. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, who is this? Uh, yeah. That that you know, that that is from the chosen, and I'm actually in the same. I'm in a comic book. 
from, uh, and that's the same picture they use in the comic book as well. I, I, I was being funny one time. I actually put it as a little my business card because everybody knew me as a beggar from season <laughs> one, episode one. I'm like, so I'm, I'm the beggar. I have a business card, so I give it around. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, now this is just uh, you. That's not. That is, that's definitely that's me. Just... I was a, a drug cartel leader. I've been that whole time. Again, what? From... You were a drug cartel leader. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you can, yeah, I'm the, I'm the nicest drug cartel. It, it, you know, it's funny. Whenever I ask people, like, hey, when you see me in a film, do you see me as a, what do you, I'm, a, I'm always making jokes. I'm like, oh, you must see me as a comedian. They're like, no, we see you as a bad guy. <laughs> You're always a bad guy. <laughs> and yeah, this is my bad guy look. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah. That's also what? in a comic book in The Chosen as well. That when, you know, when uh, Simon was fighting in, uh, in season one. Okay. <laughs> Yep, I was, uh, that was the Shabbat dinner uh, as well. And again, from The Chosen. It just so happened the camera just panned right over and I was, you know, looking at uh, the candle. <laughs> yes, that's me. Uh, this is you. What that is, is, what is <laughs> yes. This is an Domingo Warrior. What's that? So that is, uh, so from, it's Washington's Armor. Uh, from okay. From Burnham Studios. And I played a, a Mingo Warrior, so Native American. Uh, we Did had a you stay talk? Did you speak uh, no, or did on you... this one? On this one, no. Uh, this one, we, we did talk, but we were a lot of like just uh, chanting and yelling a lot. Uh, we were not the nicest people. Uh, <laughs> if you were, if you, I would say, if you were French, you probably didn't survive. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. All right. Ah, uh, this this was actually from a, a movie called The Soldier from a church from out of uh, uh, Michigan. Okay. And, uh, I was I was Tavi, so I played the uh, the lovable bartender, if you will, and the soldier. Is, it was a soldier from uh, that actually stabbed Christ when when the blood and the water, wine came out of his. Uh, oh no, sorry, blood and water came out of his side, and he was he was not, he was down there like was this really the Christ? So he came over to me, and I'm trying to console him with you know why <laughs> with these like hey relax chill out, and he asked me some questions related to if I knew about this Jesus character and. Who where his followers were. So that was Tavi from the Soldier Yes. Which by the way is going to be made as a, a feature film. Cool. All <laughs> right. Tell me about this one. Uh yeah. So this this was actually I I, I get opportunities to be um to be in uh like immersive theater. Uh so the Capernaum series, which actually they're doing it again this season for the fourth of July. They're doing this uh, um you know Independence Day, Day uh, event. And this I was a uh, farmer. Uh I was the only one that kept my beard because I was still filming with The Chosen last season as well at this time. And so the director allowed me to keep my beard. Thank you, Tammy, <laughs> for doing that. But it, it lent itself uh, very well to uh, to the character as well. But again, it was just uh, uh, part of this immersive theater that that, uh, that she did. <laughs> so uh, this is from a movie, uh, um, mannequins where uh we had to dress up as cowboys and also native americans uh this was my cowboy look i don't think i showed i don't think i put my my native american look because it was very uh wrong and and that was the point of that movie was to show that background would do anything uh, for roles even portray native americans in a bad light and that, that was kind of so the fact that i had hair i uh, was not good obviously native americans don't have hair as you saw in the mingle warrior but this was my cowboy look. Uh, again, bad cowboy look as well. Uh, but yeah, I found the most uh, Texas shirt I could find uh, for this as well. <laughs> That's definitely a Texas shirt. All right, what about this one? Yeah, so this was again from the immersive theater uh, from uh, Capernaum Studios. This is part of their apocalypse uh, show that they no longer have. Uh, but this was a man that was in hell. Uh, they it spent a lot of time uh, just focused on money uh, so you notice there's a dollar sign on my forehead. So I had that branded on me. And I'm, and I'm actually, in this case, I'm in hell. I'm trying to get out, of course, and there's no way. And, I, and I'm also just not, I'm, I'm trying to repent. I'm trying to say it was in me, it was the money. And, and just that kind of, you know, the wealth brought me nothing but pain and sorrow. I lost everything. And Ooh, you're that's really, huge. <laughs> yes. So it, 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 the interesting thing about this, um, this was done on a set and we did, we had a group of people coming through and I, I would come in, I had chains on my hands and I would step down. I would step really hard. Like just, I don't want to be or that. Or I forgot the line. It's 
I, I don't know why I'm here or something like that. And I stepped down and my foot literally went through uh, the, the, the stage and I kept on going. I just, I just like, oh, but I'm in pain. No, oh, God, why? And, but when they left, I'm like, I had to get my foot. It was not part of the show, <laughs> but my foot literally went through the stage and they fortunately mm-hmm. fixed it right afterwards. But I, I was not as strong. I should have done, it was my fault for being so heavy footed, I guess, lead footed. Mm-hmm. That I broke the stage. <laughs> Again, sorry, Tammy. <laughs> uh, so this is also from the immersive theater as well. And I played, uh, this was on uh, the Passover. We're, we're in Egypt. Uh, so you see the blood on, on the map, uh, the post on behind me as well. And I played the uh, character that was about where um, the Passover was about to happen. The Passover um, angel was about to happen. So we went into his house and uh, I lost my son. So I couldn't find him and was, we were crying out because our son was out. He was our firstborn. We weren't sure if he was going to survive or not because it was not in our room, our house when that happened. But yeah, so this was that really, uh, I forget the name of the character off the top of my head, but uh, it was just part of that immersive theater. And, and the great thing about this immersive theater, and I would, for anyone who's looking at acting, uh, in Capernaum Studios has a, these wonderful events that you actually get to practice and they'll pay you uh, depending on your role. But you actually get to practice old multiple times because you have groups of people coming through and you get to speak and, and do your same lines over and over again. So you're practicing on your, on your accent, you're practicing on your, your acting. And there are times when, um, and I'm not sure I put the one with Paul, I, I mean, sorry, Peter, when I was talking with Peter, the people got so involved in, in the, what we're showing them because they, they're right next to me. They're right, literally, they're right there. And they can, they, sometimes they, they can heckle you, or they're, they're right there, but they're, they're immersed with, with you. And you see tears and you see just that reaction. So being able to bring that out as an actor and you're just acting a part, it helps you become a better actor as well because you have immediate reaction to the way you're acting. Now, if you do it bad, they'll heckle you. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so like, ah, wait a minute, no, you missed your life. But, so, but it makes you want to be better because you're acting in front of people. And, and, and seeing that they're part of that scene and this scene again, it was very emotional. Uh, bringing that out, it just it, you can feel that emotion and, and it helps you. So when I'm in front of the camera, uh, again, having this experience has truly helped me. And, I, I, and again, if anyone has the opportunity to do that, I would definitely say do it at least once. because It brings out a better, uh, you're a better actor, <laughs> I guess. All right. Looks like you're the bad guy right here. <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, uh, I was Al Qaeda. Um, this was the Osama bin Laden uh, true story. And uh, yeah, I was um, I, that was a that was a great that was a great scene. Where I did, I did, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. It was it was a, it was a very fun. Ah uh, yes, this this actually this is my first. Uh, uh, I'm glad you, I, I forgot about this, Roberto. This is my first time I had lines in a movie, and uh, this was good intentions. It was for a, a, a student film, and I played just a, a chef. Uh, so this guy was down in his luck. He was a boxer down in his luck, and I would provide him free food. Uh, and the director allowed me some wiggle room to show more uh, of that person. I actually, again, this one I think was all Spanish as well that I did. And but the guy understood the movie was actually in English, but I, my character spoke Spanish. But yeah, so I'm trying to feed him, and just that was that was a lot of fun. This is actually at a restaurant that we uh, we used. Uh, so be in the back, and they provide real spaghetti. <laughs> I wouldn't have eaten. I wouldn't eat it. By the way, it was really bad. But uh, yeah, that's real. That was really food, real food back there. <laughs> I uh, am my chosen day. So I, I've, I am definitely been a Pharisee multiple times. Uh, this is one of the, probably the first time I was a, I was a Pharisee. Uh, the great thing about being a Pharisee on this day, I was, uh, it was the feeding, I'm sorry, it was the Sermon on the Mount. It was very cold that day. Everyone else had their own uh, uh, costumes. I was very warm with what I was wearing. So I was not, I was not cold at all. So when people tell me about the, the frozen, five, uh, frozen uh, Sermon on the Mount, I'm like, yeah, I, I was not. I was very, very well. I was really nice, toasty in there. Actually, it was too hot. <laughs> the, the, the amazing thing about being a Pharisee, just so you know, you, you get to wear these rings. And um, there's something about when you're an authority kind of person, you start acting that way. You start like, oh, where's my lamb? And you, you become Pharisee. <laughs> This was a great costume as well. Where I, this was uh, one of the, the scenes we did again from the chosen as well. Um, had there's so much detail here. There's like a chain. There's all this different sashes. The costume and uh, they, they did an amazing thing. I just 
all, all over it. It was amazing. And this scene, I was the furthest away from the camera. <laughs> you could barely, <laughs> barely see me, but, but you had everything done. And it's funny because when you showed that Mingo Warrior, it reminded me uh, as well. I, I, you know, we're there and you, 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 you get painted, you do all this other stuff. And I remember they actually gave me a, a nice little tail. And they, they put, they took their time. It was actually made out of, of, of horse hair that they, they took their time. They spent hours, hours on this. And then the director comes in and says, we need someone to be this, the person that gets scalped. And <laughs> I was the only one there. So they put a wig on this and the hair lady was like, I just spent hours on his hair and you put a wig on his head. <laughs> so that was, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Oh, this is so exciting. Oh, my goodness. I can only imagine just all of the opportunities. Look at this that you had. Yeah, that was actually, yeah. So, this, so the one before this was Daniel, and it was, it was for another event where I just spoke as Daniel. And, and again, it's very detailed. I know, sorry, no, take it, but no, this was the, the uh, wedding at Cana, the Cana wedding for the Chosen, which okay. this was a this was an overnight call she, the call that we did. We, I, think, I think our call time was 6 p.m. At around 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, the our second second assistant director came by and said, "Okay, here's the here's the uh, dance you're gonna have to learn." And he sent it to us before, so we knew about it. So we had to learn this dance to do it at the wedding. And you would think three o'clock in the morning, uh, we're all tired. No, every one of us got up and said we were dancing, jumping around. He had music going on, and we just like literally jumping. And you would think we'd be tired, but knowing that we were there for the wedding, the Cana wedding was just amazing. This is. And you get to wear these cool little outfits, which is really nice. The one thing, uh, speaking with you, that I could tell is that you really enjoy what you do. Um, what do you say to that person that may be acting, but they actually don't enjoy what they're doing? Uh, yeah, and I've actually talked to people like that before. Uh, um, if you're not if you don't enjoy what you're doing, and that's anything, if it's acting, if it's, um, you know, your corporate work or whatever you're doing, you should want to be there. You should, if, you know, if you're not doing it, then why are you doing it? I, I was, I was, I always said it multiple times. So, or find out why you're not happy. So, so sometimes it might be you're not happy because you're not getting paid the right amount of money, or you think you're not getting paid the right amount of money, or they're telling you to do tasks you want to do. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm a writer. I'm a producer. I, I may, I'm, you know, God has truly blessed me. Thank, thank, you know, financially, but I'm one of the first people to take out the trash. If I'm on set, I'm picking up people's trash, and it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter what job I'm doing. There's joy in my heart because I know I'm doing it for a different reason. I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for God. And so I would say, if you're not happy with what you're doing, find out what it is. It might be something that's going on in your life. It might be it's just you're going through hard times or marital or financial. Issues. I'm not sure. But that might be the, the, the cause of it. And then just give that to God. And if that, if that doesn't clear it up, and it's just, yeah, I don't like it, maybe it's the drudgery work of being an actor, being there all day, and I, I, I don't want to do it, then don't do it. Find yourself something that you really enjoy, that you're passionate about. But not just something that, that you just thought about today or tomorrow. Just like, really, really, really spend a time. Is this something I really want to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend a time. I'm, I'm, so as an actor, you're going to memorize lines. You're going to spend time and you're going to get into character. You're going to have to make yourself cry. You're going to have to really, really get into the character. That takes time. I, every, I've always people say, oh, I can be an actor. It's not that easy. That's that's why there are different methods. The Meisner method, the, uh, Stanislav, there's the, the um, Chubbuck, all these different methods that, that, that you use. But take the time and actually study it. And, and is that something you want to do? Research it. it, it you know, you look. I look at, like, Robin Williams is a good example. Robin Williams great comedian made people laugh but he never had that joy because there were people going there was things going on and he killed himself uh Heath Ledger you know again again great actor again but there was no joy there but if, if that that's where you find yourself and by the way if you find yourself at that point where you, you want to end your life don't take the time you know God has a plan for you as well but look it's whatever is causing that pain whatever is causing that hurt there's a solution for that no matter what you've done and again, if you're on a, on a set and you want you're a movie, you're an actor and you don't like, you don't want to be there. Well, why? Is it because of that director you don't like? Well, guess what? The next film you won't have that director. Saul. Is it because of the crafty person or the locations person or somebody got on your nerves? Guess what? The next set 
you won't have those people. It, they, they only on different sides. Just and just learn to get along with them, and just say, okay, I'm just going to survive it for today, because tomorrow's going to be different. And, then, and so then that'll help you go. But again, if you just don't want to be there, and, you, and you, it's just something, well, then find something else. Don't don't do something you're going to beat your head about. <laughs> and like, I, why am I here? Well, find what what you're what you're passionate about, and do that. Now that doesn't mean quit your job and don't support yourself. <laughs> find do a path so you can create to get to the next step while you're still finance yourself. So you can actually be successful in the next one as well. And, you know, it was, I like how you mentioned uh, Heath Ledger and how you mentioned Robin Williams, the person that's doing it just to be famous. What do you say to the person that's literally doing it just to be famous? Fame is fleeting. You, you might be the flavor of the week, of the month, of the year, but you're not going to be the flavor of the life. It, it just there's not one actor that continues all the time. Some some of the actors started later on in life. Uh, Morgan Freeman, I think, started a lot later off in life. So so if you're looking just for fame, um, it, it's it's gonna it's not gonna bring you joy. If you're looking because you're passionate about it, that'll you always have joy no matter what you're doing. You can be this the background character. You can be the lead actor. You'll always have joy. If you're doing it for fame, only one thing is going to make you happy if you're getting fame. And when that fame runs out, because it will, you're not always going to be famous. People are not always going to like you. Will Smith, you're going to make the mistakes. You know, things can happen. Life happens. But if you do it for the different, for your joy that God has that passion that you have, then it doesn't matter. Your fame, you're famous or you're not famous. You're still, you're loving life. You're, and if you've moved on, you're now teaching people or you're doing different things as well. But again, yeah. If you're pursuing that fame just because you want to be an actor, and that's because I want people to like me, well, you know what? Not everyone's gonna like. Not everyone's gonna like you. <laughs> Even the director might say, "I love you," and then like you go off saying, "Like, man, I hate that guy." <laughs> you, you don't pursue other people's thoughts. Just pursue with something that you have as well, and be okay with who you are as well. Because again, fame it's just it's fleeting. You're not gonna and and. God, life is life changes. <laughs> you might be known for your great hair tomorrow. You might not have any hair. It, you just don't. You can't based on it's simply like an athlete. You oh, I'm the best, whatever best basketball player. Tomorrow you might break your leg. What are you gonna do now? So w- what is your purpose? What are you? Do you are you passionate about the game? Are you passionate about just the fame as well? So do you put much stock in what people have to say about you? And the reason why I say that is because if we think about. Uh, we were talking about people that wanted to be famous. When you look at a Michael Jackson, you look at a um, who else? I mean, that that have just been famous, but it just seemed like it backfired on them. Right. In the end, it was like it ended up not being joy at all. It ended up being almost like a curse where, you know, you can't go anywhere with any, you can't have any peace. You can't go anywhere. <laughs> you can't do nothing. You got to stay in your spot. And because of the fact that he has had to stay in his lane, then you know all this, up, all these other accus- accusations came up. And I'm not trying to defend or any of that with him. Just hear me, y'all. I'm not trying to defend him. I'm just m- making a point that if you're looking to just be famous, it's not always a beautiful sight. It's not always a beautiful experience. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know they're. Even though I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm not the most famous guy, but people still recognize me and they'll ask me for my autograph. So it's not, you know, there are people that I have to be careful. I have to be careful about, you know, where I'm at different places as well. But again, it's, it's, it's about fame. It's not about anything else. I turn that around. I'm always, I'm always very friendly. I'll like, you know, yes, I'll talk to them or again, I'll take the time and, and, and spend the time if I have the time. Uh, but again, yes, it, it can be overwhelming. Because that's what your that's what your pursuit is, and, and you're looking for just fame, and you're not understanding that there's something totally different going on, and you let fame become more about you, and it's not about who you are. It becomes more than anything else. And, and there are a lot of famous people, uh, Wesley Snipes would be a great example. Who you know that takes the time. He had issues as well. Uh, you, you gosh, there's so many other people that, that have taken the time and actually use their craft to teach other people. Michael Caine. I can go back to he. He says, okay, I'm famous, but I'm going to help other people as well. And I, I learned that because, you know, in my family, we, we always would help out other, our own family members. So, you know, like my dad, he didn't say, put me down. He's like, well, let me encourage you. So I use that with my people that are around me. Like, 
I great. You want me to be famous? That's great. But I want you to be famous too. I, it, so we can be famous together. So it's not just about me. It's about bringing other people up. So when I look at people that are down and out or look at people that are they're struggling, I try to help them. Like, let me, let me show you a little bit more here or, or uh, maybe, maybe take more classes or something like that to help them become different so that you don't become uh, overwhelmed by, by all that fame and success. Plus the fame and success comes problems. Uh, again, people think, well, I'll make all the money. I'll be fine. <laughs> no, you have more problems. You have people that come to you for money. You have people that they're, 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 it becomes even worse. So it's, it, it's not just about the money, the fame, and, and, that, and now I'm going to be happy. And, yeah, and people, I know people are laughing like, of course I will. But no, you won't because then now there's a totally different issue. There's a totally different tax break. You're talking about. There's sure everything else comes into play as well. But if you're, but you're doing it for the right reasons, it's not going to affect you because then you're like, I want to give money to people. I want to help out people. And so you're, you're bringing people up with you instead of pushing people down to, get, to become more famous. And I've seen that. I've seen that, again, even on different back, even on the chosen, where, you, where people are trying to be famous, but they push people down because they well, see me first and don't see me. And then, ironically, the camera will pan to the person they pushed out of the way, and that's where the, that's the one that gets more famous than the person because they're trying to trying so badly to become famous. You don't have to do that. If if, if it's in God's will, it's going to happen. Just just be people, be help encourage people up, and that's what I'd rather be famous for helping people up than just be famous for being the guy pushing people down. And that's kind of stay true to who you are as well. Well, we are running out of time. I could just probably talk to you another hour, but I, I won't do that. I will <laughs> I will let you go. So in our last nine minutes, I want to give you the opportunity to say whatever is on your heart to that person that's listening. You know, they may be, I, I don't know, maybe they've had a hard time. Maybe they've tried and tried and tried and tried. They went to acting class. They've done everything that they thought they could do. And they're so discouraged and they're ready to quit. What do you say to them? Tim, just whatever's on your heart. Wow. Um, I'm sorry that happened. I'm sorry that, that no one heard you. I'm sorry that you feel that, that you're alone. I'm sorry that you feel that you've reached the last part that you've reached and you have nothing else to give because you still do. And you, there's still, you still have that light and you're still alive. You still have breath in you. And if that's your passion, if you really want to be an actor, you want to be an actress, and you really feel like this is what God has led you to do, do something. I create, do something on your phone. A lot of famous people started off just recording themselves, and now you see them taking off on TikToks and YouTube pages and everything else. Or just feed into somebody else. One thing that helps you is, and again, I love teachers. A teacher becomes even better when they teach. So if you, if you feel like I, I'm going nowhere, well, teach someone else to become a better actor with all the experience you've learned and all the additions you had. Don't see them as negative. You got to know. Okay, great. That no taught you what not to do. Now teach someone to not do that and help them. And as you encourage others, God sees your heart. He sees that your heart is not about you. He sees that your heart is about the kingdom. It's about what, how to encourage other people as well. And it might be through you through that one, you know, that you didn't give up, that that one person might come to Christ. That one person might, might change. And it might be that one person you encourage that later on in life, they're like, I remember that person back then. And then now you're the main character. You don't know. You don't know how God's going to use. I've, I've, there's so many stories I can tell you. And by the way, the world, I've been around the, most of the world. Every country I've been to, there's the same story. The person that had nothing became something because somebody invested in them. And it was the person that was going to give up that invested in the person that was just starting out. And now that person then invested back in that person. I, that's happened a lot. I, I'll be honest with you. I have friends in Brazil, multimillionaires, because someone took the time to invest in them. And they were living in the slums. So they you know, had nothing. But because, they, because somebody else invested in them, they're now better. And I, I would say the same thing for you. Don't give up. Use this time. Use your, your experience. Everything that you've learned and in your acting world and your acting you know, ex experience and your journey to then invest in others, as well as create your own videos. You know, write things down, write, write down. Maybe that's, and by the way, the story of a person that kids like being told no, that could be a movie. <laughs> and I'd probably write, I'd probably produce it if you wrote it because I would, that, that's, that's, that shows like you never gave up and then you wrote a, you wrote a movie. What? That would be awesome. People would watch it. I guarantee it. Just don't make it corny. But people, people would watch it. 
<laughs> and even and, and and by the way, there's probably some comedic things like maybe you were there late and that's why you missed the audition, or maybe you just uh, uh, you forgot your lines. That's comedy gold. I mean, you can again, people would listen, people would watch that as well. So again, even your story, whatever that story is, and it's down and out story, whatever it is, write something, and and just but do something with it. Don't give up. Don't give up at all. I love it. I love how you flip that and said, just make a movie out of it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm a living witness that, you know, you can just do it. I mean, who would have ever thought Sheila Black would start a talk show? <laughs> who would have ever thought that? But I, I hadn't even thought of that. But God dropped it in my spirit. So I say that to say, you know, just go live on Facebook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go live on YouTube, make your own movie, make your own movie. So I, you know what? Thank you so much. This has been such a great interview and I cannot wait. I cannot wait until this movie is out and I cannot wait to see all the things that God is going to do for you. I'm going to be on the, not the front row, because I won't be able to see. I'm going to be on the back row. Yeah. (laughs) I will be there opening, opening, opening weekend. I will be there to see the movie. I can't wait. So nice. I thank you so much for being my guest tonight. And, you know, if anyone have any questions, just put it in the chat and I'll make sure that Mr. Rubin gets your questions. And, you know, maybe he may have an answer or a recommendation or something for you. So if you have any questions, just put it in the chat and we'll get back with you. So thank you, everyone who are all of you who are listening. I ask that you would share this because there is somebody that need to hear the words that Mr. Rubin has spoken tonight. Somebody, somebody out there need to hear it. And that is the whole purpose of my talk show is to just get the word out and just interview great people like Rubin and and letting the world know that, you know, all these famous people, they're just like us. They're (laughs) real people, real people. And I thank you for being so down to earth and being so easy to interview. So again, everyone, make sure and share this video. And this has been Touching You Talk Show with Ruben Martinez. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.